Did you hear about the Fed? Did they announce another round of the quantitative easing? They said they are ready to do more quantitative easing down the road. They still call it quantitative easing? Yes. But we expose that as a fancy way of saying printing money. Quantitative easing still sounds better at cocktail parties. Why would they want to print more money? Unemployment is still too high. Isn't that what the first round of quantitative easing was supposed to fix? Yes, but it didn't, and that's why we had the second round. So round two was supposed to fix round one? Right. Then why would we need a round three? To fix round two. What if that doesn't work? There is always round four. This is starting to sound like an Abbott and Costello routine. Except the outcome is more tragedy than comedy. Why? Each round does certain kinds of damage to the economy that needs to be fixed by the next round. What kind of damage? Artificially low interest rates hurt those that rely on interest income like the elderly and pension funds. And printing money hurts consumers by making things cost more. Has the Fed announced any other policies? They announced they will keep short-term rates at zero for years. Have rates already been at zero for a long time? How did you know? I have figured out the formula for predicting all the Fed's actions. What is it? First, you take a past policy by the Fed that has been a complete bust. Then what? Then you double the size of it, and do it for twice as long. You would make an excellent economist. Does the Fed still think inflation is too low? Yes. Have prices fallen since the last time we had this conversation? No, the prices of necessities have gone even higher. So how could the Fed claim we don't have an inflation problem? Because the new iPad costs the same as the old iPad, but runs faster. You must be joking. No, someone asked a Fed official what he thought about rising grocery prices, and he said they are offset by better iPads. Isn't all this money printing supposed to help the unemployed? Yes. But if you are unemployed, you probably aren't buying a new iPad. No. And you certainly aren't buying one every year to appreciate how the new iPads are faster but cost the same. Definitely not. But the unemployed still have to eat food and pay for gasoline. Of course. So how is all this money printing that drives up food and gas prices but doesn't impact iPad prices supposed to help unemployment? It doesn't. Last year as prices surged some companies had layoffs to offset higher raw material costs. But there must be some benefit to all this money printing for the Fed. It makes the stock market go up. Really? Yes. When asked about the accomplishments of the quantitative easing, the Bernanke often points to rising stocks. Do unemployed people own a lot of stocks? No. Most stocks are owned by the wealthy. What does the Fed think these wealthy people will do now that their stocks are higher? Maybe they'll buy more iPads. Have higher stocks resulted in significant hiring? Not really. Why not? Because you can put lipstick on a pig, but you cannot make it create economic value. What does that mean? It means it matters why a stock is going up. So if stock prices go up because the Fed is printing, it's not as beneficial as if they go up because the economy is better. Exactly. Is there a downside to Fed actions driving stock prices? The stock market has become more unstable, and many individual investors refuse to participate. Why? Because they would rather make investment decisions based on business factors, not which way the wind blows in Washington. But you said stocks have been going up? They have also been having wild fluctuations, so even when they end a year flat most people lose money. That sounds just like a casino. Except there are no pretty women serving free drinks. Are big institutions still investing in stocks? Some like the big pension funds have no choice. Why not? They have to make a minimum return each year. Can't they just buy safe treasury bonds? No. Thanks to the quantitative easing treasury bonds don't pay enough interest. So what can they do? They have to buy stocks and other risky investments. Does the Fed say it will do the quantitative easing forever? No. They say eventually they will reverse the quantitative easing. Then what happens to the stock market? It might crash. So the quantitative easing is doing both harm and good, but the Fed interprets the harm as a need for more quantitative easing. Right. And it's also driving people to buy stocks. Yes. At the same time, the quantitative easing is also making stocks more dangerous. Yes. And after everyone has bought a lot of stocks, the Fed might crash the stock market. Exactly. Are you sure this isn't some episode of the Twilight Zone? I am starting to wonder myself. You are about to enter another dimension, a dimension of policies and effects, a dimension of dollars and cents.
you are moving into a land where those that have failed the most in the past get the most power in the future, you've just crossed over into the Bernanke zone. <laughs>